Good morning, my name is Alida and I'm here with Dr. Matt Mark Moffat from the National Geographic and well, could you give us some advice for uh, aspiring grad students looking into entomology? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's, all, it's all good as the advice. Find what you're interested in because basically uh, my view of the world is it's all about telling stories and if you have a passion for your story, particularly if it's your story, whether it's a, an insect, uh, whether it's an ecosystem, whether it's a tribe in Venezuela, whatever it is, uh, that's what uh, science needs and that's what National Geographic and other storytellers need. And so whatever direction you go in, it's, about, it's a question of telling stories. And what about for people that um are in entomology already, but they're not looking for <laughs> such an academic uh, career. They want to do something outside. Okay. Well, it's uh, again, it's a matter of the st stories and the forms you want to tell them. So if you're interested in insects, but you're, you don't want to become an academic, that's what I did. I support myself through writing and photography, and I do my research on the side. Look for the book later. <laughs> so, um, it's basically the stories are first. People go out and they worry too much about, uh, say, photography, when photography is just, uh, there are millions and millions of people take pictures. There's no shortage of pictures. It's, the, it's uh, what you have to say with the pictures that's interesting. And that gives you a big advantage in something like entomology because there are tons of stories that no one's ever heard. Everyone's heard about pandas too many times and entomology and the stories of entomologists are like science fiction to most people and you can turn them into really exciting stories that uh, surprise people. Ants are an obvious example where it's almost uh, like alien warfare and then you have all kinds of weird sex and violence and all kinds of things you can get away with with insects and selling, telling stories even in the National Geographic that you can't do with anything else. So insects are fantastic things for stories. And what's one of your favorite stories? Well, there's always a new uh, favorite story. Let's see, what's a good story? Well, like one of them I told uh, yesterday was about the, the mud ant, which is the world's uh, slowest ants. And I uh, went after this and Ecuador are very hard to find. They're tiny ants, cover themselves with mud so they blend in and they move very, very slowly. So it's a, several days of going through the leaf litter, piece of leaf by piece of leaf, to look for a speck of moving mud. And we eventually found a colony and uh, no one had studied them before, but it turned out that the mud ant specializes, as you might think a slow creature would, on snails. And they chase snails in super slow mo which is really kind of pleasant when you're uh, an ant person because normally the ants are like swarming up your body and you can't keep them off you. In this case, I could like, I got a hammock and a cold beer and I laid back in my hammock and leaned over every once in a while and saw how the mud ant was doing, chasing its snail and took a picture <laughs> occasionally. So it was a very mellow experience to uh, photograph the mud ant in, in mid-combat with snails. And of all the places that you have visited, where do you want to go explore next? Well, I'm always looking for new places to play. Uh, so I'm going to the Middle East. I've worked in Iran already, nearly was kidnapped there, but uh, I haven't done enough in the Middle East. So I'm going back. To, I'm going to Yemen next, and. Uh, I always love working in Venezuela, so it's one of my favorite spots. I'm going to get there hopefully later next year and, and do some exploration of the Tukui Mountains again. Mm, you said you had some trouble in Iran, but what would be like the most um, uh, like exciting or dangerous moment that you have been throughout your explorations and travels? Around? Oh well, I did s s actually sit on a fair lance, which is the most deadly snake in the world. <laughs> or at least in the new world and uh, but I sat squarely on its head which is the only correct way to sit on a 
venomous snake. So if you sit on the snake, remember to sit <laughs> square okay. on its head so it can't turn around and bite you. Where did that happen? Uh, Where were it you? happened in Manu, Peru. I was uh, uh, walking along with my friend Doug Yu and we were looking for ant plants. And uh, we were a little bit tired and like from carrying stuff up and down hills. And so we see one of the ant plants and we just decided to collapse right there in the trail and look at it. And Doug Yu turns to me and suddenly turns pale and starts screaming, get up, get up. And I had no idea what was going on. So I just kind of rolled to the side and there was this flash. And uh, uh, this snake was probably much more psychologically damaged than I was. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> thank you.